Hello. Horse channel is here. Happy New Year. Happy Christmas. Happy uh, whatever you uh, whatever you like to celebrate on your holidays. And for me, it's New Year. Registration is completed for a lot of people, like tourists, Kevin Sun, Berter, Ormless, Ice of Twenty Seven. So this is interesting. Let's. Okay, we will deal with Isaf. <clears throat> Anton Trigop, Turmax, what is it? 153 Siri J, Siri J, Siri J. Maxim seventeen forty four, never give up. Hmm. Well, a lot of people. Seventy four tractor. I know many of you uh, love this person, but I especially love him because he is my teammate. As well as Savely Grigoryev, which is here. And of course, Gas. Gas is our main uh, antagonist today. We have prepared a whiteboard and prepared a testing environment. You have a new message. Oh, Ice of Twenty Seven will compete with us. So nice. So we have now upcoming one hundred and fifty minutes of pure joy and chill. So, so. Let's go. Okay, let let's prepare link. It's like, uh, it's not something you will be taught in university. But nineteen nineteen. Okay, see, we can just replace it with nine. Yeah, and also B. Let's let's prepare our links. <laughs> it's already lagging. No 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 nineteen nineteen. Oh no what? Okay. There are definitely some issues with Cody Forces right now. But okay. Problem zero? What? Ah, it's like the first problem. And listen, pop a board, play with wallets. Uh, choose to exchange wallets with their opponent or keep them or remove one coin from their wallet. Okay, so the person who has both zeros loses, and this means that we only depend on the parity. So we read 
and then bam. So we just print fine guns depending on this. So if it is an even number then uh something like this i believe let's check uh, please work fast please work fast bob ellis bob ellis bob bob ellis ellis bob bob We are given a string consisting of pluses and minuses. We will need to. S uh, to do the following, we split A into several arrays. Yeah. After that, the penalty is the absolute value of its sum multiplied by its length. Its length. Okay, so we need to divide the array into, into several arrays, and the penalty is sum of balance i times mm, times what times the length. So it's easy to see. Okay, let the total balance be i it seems that we just need to remove i uh brackets so that okay what is k is it is k known no it's just the, it's it is just the balance i believe it's it is or not no it's not a balance is it just a balance It's just the balance. One five zero four four. Yes. Problem C. Grouping increases. Okay, I, I need to be sure that I don't get wrong answer. So we have an array, we can split into two subsequences and calculate and nothing calculate for an array B, define the penalty as the number of indices. So we want to divide it into two subsequences which are as decreasing as possible. As much in decreasing as possible. Hmm.
Okay, can we just do it uh, greedily? Like, so what, what do we have? We would, like have an answer. We have two current sequences. And we want to minimize the answer and among all answers. So if it's, it is the last element, we want ma to maximize this element. So if we have some next element, we either put it here or here. So is it okay to do it greedily? Is it okay to do it greedily? I don't know if it is okay to do it greedily. We can just check by accepted, but I don't like it. This particular problem because the, these tests are definitely really weak. So, okay. Let's assume that I divided my array into two parts and I did something here. So the optimal answer does something here. Can I replace it with this way of doing it? Yeah, so instead of uh, their way, I do it my way. So here we have uh, some last element and some other element maybe not last but still and here we have uh some element u and then this part adds something here and adds something here so there are two cases if this ans is equal to this ans then this num number v is at least is at most number u so the answer is at most this answer second okay yeah we can just do it greedily i got it got it mm -hmm. so we read the array and we read ans equals zero so we store the answer we store the last element which is initially infinity and we store other element which is also infinity then we go through everything so what do we do? In the end, we will say that last equals i. Here we say that if okay, I, I just want to say. Let me think. Okay, we just have two elements. I, I would say the, we just have two elements. So maximum, which is one in nine, and second maximum, which is also one in nine. Okay, maximum and minimum. Let's call it maximum and minimum. So if minimum is at least i then we just replace we just replace uh 
minimum with I and nothing else. Uh, else if mx is at least I, then we say that mx equals I and that's it. Otherwise, we say that mn equals mx and mx equals I. And we need to increase the answer. So always sum of these two numbers is I. Okay, well, three one zero zero zero. Yes. Do I like it or not? So again, so what I want to ensure is that mx is always at least mn. So if mn is at least i, then mx is still at least mn. If it's not true, then we replace mx with i, and now i is greater than mn. Or here, mn is mx, mx is i, and i is greater than mx. Okay. Oh no. Please no. Endings show not a good things. Honestly speaking. Okay, problem D. There is a edge weighted complete binary tree within leaves. It is defined as a tree where every non-leaf vertex has exactly two children. Mm -hmm. For every internal vertex, one of the edges to its children has weight zero, while the other has edge one, uh, has weight one. You forgot what the tree looks like, but luckily you still remember some information about the leaves in the form of array A of size n. For each i, ai represents the distance from the root. Weighted distance. From the root to the ith leaf in DFS order. Determine whether there exists a complete binary tree which satisfies the array A. You do not need to reconstruct it. So what do we have as an input? We just have some distances. Can we construct... Ah, uh, what? No, 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 no. AI represents the distance from the root root to the ith leaf in DFS order. So we have a DFS order. We have a DFS order. Okay, hey, what if we have C? What if we see one, uh, one zero one? It means that we have several possible trees. For example, this is fine, and and what? This is fine, but also. This is also fine. Uh, 
Okay. So we need to somehow check it. <clears throat> Let's think. Okay, so let's find zero, for example. Let's find zero, we know that it is zero. Then we have something like this. And everything is zeros here. What can we do then? Actually, there are two cases. So either zero is here or zero is here. Can we just, can we make some reconstruction to make a tree more like a bamboo? Let's, let's see. For example, let's assume that we have zero one and here we have also zero one and zero one. So the leaf Okay, there are just cases. There are cases. So we have already considered this one. Zero one uh, uh, one zero one zero one one zero zero one. This is what we considered, and we transposed it into uh, zero one zero one. So this works. Okay. What else we can have? Can we have? We can have. We can, so this looks like one zero one. Okay, what else? We can also have one zero one zero, which looks like one one zero. Okay, this can only exist as this thing. There are no other choices. Okay. Okay, maybe I got it. We need some iterative process. So what uh, an iterative process is? If we look at the lowest two leaves, yeah, which are neighbors, then they differ by one. 
and we can always replace them by just one vertex here, which is A. So let's do a greedy process. Let's do a greedy process, which is simply sorry, a greedy process, which is simply if we have two consecutive numbers, we just replace them with the minimum and we just ban the other one. Okay, so let's do this process. Let's do this process and note that at some point we only need to have uh, the single zero. So what I claim is we need to get an array where there is only one zero. Let's prove that it is sufficient. It is necessary. So if we didn't get, if we got one number but this is not zero, this means that we the minimum in our array is not zero, and this is not correct array. So let's assume that the minimum is zero. Still, we got an array where there are no two consecutive equal numbers. Is it a problem? It is not a problem because something like this is possible. And if I replace this with zero, it would be an incorrect operation. But what if I start with the maximum? So what if I always remove a maximum if it is neighboring with some smaller number? Uh, just so, so the operation is I if I see some maximum, I just remove it. That's it. I just remove it. A number if it is bigger than something else. It seems like an, a, a criterion. So if I can do it, then it is correct. And if it is correct, then let's look at the maximum number. It definitely should be destroyed with some smaller number. So the smaller number should be near it. So I can remove it and run the induction hypothesis. Well, so how do I write it? Okay, so, so my solution is I take the maximum number and I remove it. I, I, I take the maximum number, I check that Mm. I take the maximum number I, and I need to remove it if it has a neighbor of m minus 1. How do I do it? So first of all I need to find the minimum and it should be a single zero. Then I just need to run the recursive function which, which checks this half and this half. Yes. So again, what do I need to check? To check about a tree of mth order. I need to check that there is some M here and I need to check that this is
a forest of m plus first order and this is a forest of m plus first order. So how do I check that? Something is a forest of m plus first of mth order. So I need there to be at least one m. I need there to be, or maybe zero. I need there to be several m's, maybe zero. And all these things should be of m plus first order. So this should be either an empty array. So again, what I need, I need to it, it to be either empty or there should be at least one M. And and this should be a Everything of these of these things should be a forest of M plus first order. Oh my god. So I need to, actually, I need to find minimum fast, fast mean. I need to find minimum first, don't I? Okay, it is just a sparse table, but I need to write it. Oh, let's say that. So we need L equals one and while L is less than okay a dot size I don't see any problem. So what do we do? In the end we will say that plus plus six and L is multiplied by two and here we need to say that S dot push back S dot back then we say that what do we say we need to say that s x plus first i is minimum of s x i and also i need to find the exact position, I believe. So VVIS should be the position. Yeah, so S is the position. So I say Mm 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so here we need to say that it is like minimum of this and this. Correct? No. Just plus L. So this is not correct because this can overflow. So we say if I plus L is at least N, then S X plus 1 I is simply S X. Okay. Else it should be minimum of these two, but we need to check if one of them is less than the other. So I ask if A S X I is less or equal than S X I plus L. And then I choose the left one and I say that S X plus one I is S X I. Else S X plus one I is S X I plus L. Okay, this is the sparse table. Now we need to find mean from like x to y excluding. So we take the length. We need to find the minimum power, the minimum power of two. We need such l that. 2L is at least length. Okay, maybe mean L such that 2L is greater than L. Okay. So, for 1 I want 0. But for 2... I want maybe 1. And for 3 I want 1. For 2 I want 2. What is this function? This function is simply CLZ. C yeah, CLZ. Uh, namely, 30, 30 31 minus CLZ. Okay. Then I ask, please look at two indices. The first one is S L X, and the second one is S L Y minus. 1 to L. Correct? Mm 
Yes. Then I need to choose the minimum. So if A S No, we don't have S, we have we have we need to store the array A. If A in the one is less than or equal th than A in the two, then we return in the one, else we return in the two. Okay. So this is the find minimum function in sparse table. What do we, how do we use it here? We return a boolean where this is standable. Okay, here I s s construct a sparse table. Then I I check it recursively. So check tree of S. So how does check tree work? So, first of all, we need to check that the minimum is order. So, if s dot a int is not order, then I return false. After that, I need to check that Both sides are forests. Check forest of ASL in the order plus one and check forest of S int plus one are order plus one. So how do we check forest? How do we check forest? To check forest, what do we need? We need to First of all, if it is empty, then it is always true. If it is empty, then always true. Otherwise, we need to find an M here. We need to check that this is a forest of order M plus one. And here we need to check that it is either a forest of order M or a forest of order m plus one. Let's call it a weak forest of order m. So again, I need to find if r minus l, if r equals l return true, then I do this. Otherwise, I need to check forest of the left, 
part and check weak forest of the right part. Finally, we need to check the weak forest. How do we check the weak forest? So if it is order, I need to check forest of this order. Else if else I need to check forest of the sec of the next order. It failed. Why did it fail? Check forest initializer undefined. So let's do this. Nice. Let's check. <clears throat> no, yes. <laughs> this is funny. This is totally funny. Okay, we need to debug it. So the first index from zero to five. is one and this is in no this is not the minimum it is not correct so how did it do it length is five l is two this is fine then x is zero and y minus this thing is one and this is fine but why it said one i don't understand this means that this was constructed incorrectly So let's look. We have S0, which is understandable. Let's look at S1. Let's also look at A. A is what I expect there to be. Okay, now it's 1, 1. Okay, why this is 1? I don't understand. Let's look again. Okay, here it should have been A. Still no and yes? Okay, what now? Now it is two. And this is order, so now I need to check left forest and the right forest. Let's check the right for uh, the left forest from zero to two. So th this should be a forest of order one. I found the minimum, which is on the first position. It is of the correct order. Then now I need to check two forests. Okay, I check the left forest. It is true. What it? Okay, I messed it up. Okay, 
Okay, now now it checks the the right forest of order one, which is from three to five. So this should be a forest of order three. It found three. It's correct. Now it needs to check the forest and the weak forest. Ah, the right part should be the weak forest of order order. Okay. Okay, I understand. But why this is yes? What? It it's now it works. Okay, I need to see that. I believe. I believe I need to see that. So why did it decide to say that it is not a correct tree? So it's checking the left forest and it should be fine. Now it's checking the right forest which is from 2 to 5. It definitely found one. It found the left part which is from 2 to 3. And now it's checking the right part which is from four to five so it's just three it checked this yeah it seems absolutely fine let's let's try to submit it because i don't see any reasons it should fail Three hundred eleven. Are you nuts? Okay, problem F one. Or problem E. What do we believe in more? Problem F one. Maybe maybe problem one F one. Yeah. We have three arrays. Okay, I believe I need to read both problems. What's that? Ah, it is. Okay. We have three arrays. A and B have length n, and C has length n minus 1. Great. And water towers. The Ith has AI liters and has a wizard with power BI. Also, there is a valve of capacity CI. Then for each I, the following happens. The wizard removes at most BI liters of water and turns it into wine. And at most CI liters of the remaining water left in the water tower I flows through the valve into water tower I plus one. There are Q updates. In each update you will be given integers P, X, Y, Z and you will need to update Ith tower, P, Pth tower. After each update find the value of W. Previous updates persist throughout future updates. Oh my god. It is some sort of... Oh no, it's some sort of uh, segment tree. Why are there so many data structures? I don't like it. I don't like data structures. I have already suffered while writing the sparse table and now it's a segment tree. So let's see if we have some segment what does it mean what does it do for the right part it simply creates some liters of wine and it also gives away some liters of wine to the next tower some liters of water 
Yes. No, also we have some sort of left capacity. So this thing is a function. We need to understand this function to operate with them. So one unit is simply a... So for, first of all, let's... Let's see. So we have some incoming water, which we will call X. And we have two functions. How, main, how much wine we have and how much is gone into the next uh, tower. And we can calculate that if we know if we know what if we know A B C. Yeah, we have A, B, and C. We have A, B, C. So now we know how much water we generate, how much wine we generate, and how much water we transfer to the next tower. Namely, we have minimum of B and A plus X generated, generated uh, wine, and we have minimum of, of C and A plus X minus minimum of B and A plus X transferred to the right side. Or we can rewrite it as minimum of C and maximum of zero. <coughs> oh. And A plus X minus B. Okay, so there are these two functions. What if we combine these two functions? So, what kind of function is this one? What kind of function is this one? What if I remove everything except x? Can I do it? I want f of x. It seems that I put x in some segment, and after that I add constant. So, Let's assume that our function is of the following uh, form. Take mean of max of x and l and r and plus c. So this is my function. This is what I want. Okay. It seems that both of them are of this form. Also, is it true that ah, CIs are always infi infinite? So th this problem is easier with infinite capacities. Do I need it? Do I need it to solve to be solved for F1 or I Solve F2 immediately. Okay, let's solve F2, I think. So, le let's calculate these numbers L, L, R, and C. So, basically, let's look at, the, at this function. Minimum of B and A plus X. It is simply A plus minimum of X and B minus A which is the tuple A
minus infinity b minus a so this is my basic block of wine and after that the second function is simply simply what it is simply okay this one minimum of c and maximum of these numbers let's subtract a minus b let's subtract a minus b why do i subtract a minus b because this is the, the, the difference between these two values a minus b plus minimum of c minus a plus b and maximum of b minus a and x so i put x between b minus a and c minus a plus b and add a minus b so this is how much is transferred through the cable okay now we need to find the composition of these two functions do I, do I need to find the compositions of these two functions somehow okay let's think Mm. Let's think, let's think, let's think. Also, it is notable that these numbers are always uh, opposite. Okay, fine. So let's let's look at two blocks. We have the first block which has parameters a b c is it true that wine is always minus infinity here so the mi oh no not correct i should write it like this Firstly, I put x, l, and l is uh, minus infinity. Then I put r, which is b minus a, and then I put the constant a. So let's look at two blocks. We have block A, B, C, and we have a block D, E, F. Okay? So we have made this much wine and we have transferred this much wine so a prime b prime plus c prime okay let's assume that we have transferred this much wine what next then we move this number into some segment and, uh, and add something Okay, I don't like it because I think the composition of two blocks is still the movement into some segment. 
it still should be a movement into some segment. What do I mean by that? I mean by that that we have a, f a lot of blocks. Actually, we have a lot of blocks. So let's slowly increase the x. We slowly increase the x. And first of all, it... How does it work? First of all, it increases this tank. And at, and at some moment, it produces all bi wine which are needed. So it just produces bi. After that, everything except that is transferred to the next tank. Uh, and and at some moment we just transfer CI. After that, this for this thing the same happens. Okay. Can we just merge two tanks into one big tank? Or we cannot? No, we cannot. Because if this exceeds, exceeds CI, we just stop. We just stop and we don't do anything. Well, it it still should be possible to merge two tanks. Let's let's try and do it. Yeah, so we have a tank, a, a tower A. Which with a wizard B and a, t a tube, how it's called, a pipe, valve C. And also we have D. E and F. How do we, they combine? How do they combine? I think there are some cases. I think there are some cases. Uh, and also some water goes here. Okay, first of all, first of all, let's say the following thing. If this is greater than zero and this is greater than zero, I can just subtract one from both of them and then add one to the answer. And the vice versa, I can subtract one from A and B and add one. I can subtract one from the answer and add one to A and B. So let's assume that at least one of these numbers is zero always. So, this is zero or this is zero, and this is zero or this is zero. Also, if this is greater, A is greater than B, and A is greater than B, and uh, A is greater than C,
then we can simply subtract one from here and add one here. This is what we can do always. So when we when we combine these two things yeah first of all we can say that let me think So we can say that at most one of three things is not zero. Yeah, because if there are two non-zeros, ah, this can be positive and this can be positive. Okay. So let's consider several cases. Let's consider several cases. First of all, it can be zero. And it can be zero. How do we combine them? Then then what? Then it looks like I have a wizard of strength. So first of all, I can replace it with minimum of I can replace this with minimum of e and c yeah so c is at least e always okay in this case i can just say that i have a wizard b plus e and i can transfer also f c is at, is at least f I cannot transfer more than I already do. No, I can. No, 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 no. C can be... Uh, what? Okay, in this particular case... Oh, there are so ma so many cases. I don't like it. Okay, fine. Let's solve this problem for infinite valves because I don't like it. I need some simpler problem. Then the combining is just easy because I have A, B and I have C, D. Then when I combine them, Yeah, it's simply, simply what? No, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. Oh, I understand. I will return in like, several minutes.
Okay, I I think I managed to do it. I think. So first of all, I don't like this representation, so I will change it. For now, we forget about C, okay? Then we have the following. We have uh, we have minimum answer, which we always which we always add to to the total answer. Let's call it A. In our case, it's just minimum of A and B. Also, there is some, va some value which is always transferred to the next valve, to the valve. In our case, it is A mi minus minimum of A and B. It is always transferred through through the valve. And finally, it is residual ability of the wizard, which is B minus minimum of A and B. And also, let's have some residual capacity of the valve. Okay? So, actually, the residual capacity of the valve is C minus minimum of C and A minus minimum of A and B. And here we have minimum of C and this. Yeah, is it long, long? Let's even make this data structure. So, structure or tower. Uh, what do we have? So, we have the guaranteed added to the answer. We have re the residual capacity. We have the residual power of wizard and we have a guaranteed transfer so these are the four numbers which we have let's combine two towers Let's think about it. How do we combine two towers? So again, it has some guaranteed answer. It has some wizard power. It has some liquid, which is always transferred to the next valve, to the next tower. And it has some residual capacity here. Let's call them A1, B1. C1 and C1, and here we have T2, C2, uh, B2, and A2. So first of all, this is transferred to our final answer. This is easy. Moreover, what is also done. Also, T1 is added, first of all, it is added here, and maybe it contributes to this answer. And otherwise, it is added here, and contributes to the answer. So let's, let's do it. So first of all, we have tower a ans 
first of all, a dot ans equals ans plus t dot ans. Then we have some liquid. Which comes to power tower from tower A to the tower T. Let's call it B actually. So we need to do it. We have T1 liquid which came here. So Let's call it like added to ans2. It is minimum of transferred liquid and b dot uh, ability of the wizard. So this is added to the answer. So we need to say that answer dot. Let's let's say that we have a little transferred which is like tra I think it's RR or not I don't know then we say that transfer minus equals add to ans2 what do we do then then this value tries to add to c2 also, I say that answer dot transferred. Let's say that we have answer answer dot capacity equals capacity and answer dot not capacity but b dot capacity and answer dot tra equals b dot tra. Then we say that this transferred liquid tries to. Uh, Go to the right. So this is minimum of the residual trans transferred liquid and answer dot capacity. And then we say that answer dot capacity is reduced by this number, but answer dot transferred liquid is increased by this capacity. Okay, so now we can assume that this doesn't exist. This doesn't exist. Okay? Now we have some liquid <coughs> which comes here. First of all, it fills up this number. Then at most C2 of it also fills this number. And finally some of it can go to the right. So let's find out how much is the answer. So answer BY is, first of all, it's just BY. This is simple. Now we can assume that this is zero. So now all of this liquid goes through this valve. So everything else is at most at most C2. It's capped by C2 actually. It can add to this number at most C2 minus B2. So let's say that LL second BVI is minimum of uh capacity and bvi of the second liquid then what do we say let's say something like so we ha we have capacity which is cap then we do this then we subtract it from here but we add it to the answer Okay, so now we have some residual liquid and everything it does 
is just it goes here. So the capacity C2 is capped by this number. Uh, so we say that answer dot capacity is minimum of answer dot capacity and capacity. And we return answer. So this is some messy function, but hopefully it works. What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> what is Z? Ah, okay. Now let's read the input N and Q. And then we have n numbers a, b, and c. Let's read them. Scene a, b, c. Then we have some queries. And each query is just four numbers. p, x, y, and z. That's actually... Is it true that... The only number which is long long is C. Yes. The only number which is long long is C. Okay, but we have P, X, Y, and Z. What is P? Ah, this is the number of Operation to apply the uh, the number of tower to apply the operation. So we have P, X and what P Q, X Q, Y Q, and Z U. Finally, we find the answer. And how do we do it? A, B, C, P, X, Y, Z. Crazy. Then we just print the answer on different lines. Here I need to remove this. Mm -hmm. Finally, we need to find the answer. So it's just vectors of ints, but for C and Z, it is VL. Nice. Also, what do I want to do? I want to find answer given number X, which is... given into my tower and I need to return ans plus minimum of bvi index it is also const great finally there is a segment tree for some reason on these values And I hate it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I, I really hate it. I don't want to write it. So let's construct all the towers. Perfect. 
first of all, I think we can just agree to to push back infinity in the last number. I think I will do it here. C dot push back one e eighteen. Let's go. Let's also construct the tower. How do we construct the tower? So answer is simply minimum of A and B. Then BVI. This is the residual ability of the wizard. It is initially B, but we need to subtract the answer. Then there is a value which is always transferred. And the value which is always transferred. Wait, okay, let's first of all say capacity. And capacity is simply... Okay, I think we'll, we'll need to swap this. Because tray is easier. Capacity is actually simply C minus trunk. And now I need to calculate tra. So what value is always transferred? It is minimum of C and something. Something what? So I have a, power, a tower ABC. What is always transferred? Always transferred a minus uh, ans. A minus ans. Oh. Mm hmm. So here I say that VI equals tower of AI BI CI. Then I construct a segment tree. Mm, I think we will just do it without templates. Then I need to make all the operations how much how many numbers q plus one q numbers okay so what do i do here here i say that st dot update something what something i say that now ST is updated with P the Pth value. Okay, I can I think I can subtract P always. Subtract one from P decremented. P is updated with tower of X I Y I Z I. Then I need to Find the answer. How do I find the answer? ST dot find answer of of what? Of X? What is X? Ah, it's just zero. Yeah. Zero. And I add it to the answer. Or I say that ns i is this number, where ans is VL of size Q. 
and I return the answer. Okay, so I need three functions. I need a constructor. I need a fine dance. And I need an update function. Mm -hmm. uh. So to do it what i will need is to find the total sum so i need to find total sum which is to say return sum from zero to n And I need n, which is return uh, s dot size divided by 2, where s will be the vector of towers. So find dance will be the following. I find the total sum and I find dance in X for this number. Yeah. So now let's find everything else. First of all, the segment tree. How do I do it? Oh, I say that S I plus N equals V I, then I need to calculate it for everything else. How it's done? I don't. Be, I don't remember. Actually, I don't really remember. I think maybe we just say that S i equals S two times i plus S two times i plus one. But maybe I am mistaken. So maybe this is that easy. Okay, let's find the sum. What I need to say is L plus equals N, R plus equals N. Also, I need some sort of uh, ID tower. Let's make it. So ID tower does not have an answer, does not have a BVI, does not have a transfer and has infinite capacity. Mm -hmm. So this is an ID tower. Tower runs is initialized. What are you saying? So I have tower L and R. In the end, I will return L plus R. So while L is at most R, while L is less than R, I do something. So let's think what I do. So if always everything is 2i and 2i plus 1. So if L is even, then it is easy. If L is odd, it is not easy. So let's check if it is odd. If L is odd, 
I say that L equals L plus SL. And L should be increased by 1 after that. If R is even, then R is S plus plus R plus R. After that, I divide it. I divide them by two. Okay. Yes. And finally, update. How do I update? I also say that x plus equals n. I also say that Oh, I don't I don't remember how it's done. Do I remember how it's done? <clears throat> Let's just do it however it goes. I don't remember. So I say that S X equals while X I say that, no, I say that S X equals T and while X is positive, I need to say this, Let, let's call it recalc, where I just ask it to do this. And here I ask to recall i. <clears throat> so here I just recall x. So it's it's that's it. <clears throat> Let's check something. I spent so much time on this. I I be believe I am like three hundred. Yes. Update. Cannot convert from vi to int, but we don't need it. Ah, vi. Yeah, Six four four. No, no, it is not. Let's see. We need to draw a picture. Actually, the tests don't look that bad. I think we can manage to understand them. So we have four towers. The first Update does not many make any modifications. Ah, okay, yeah. So we have let's draw three, 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 three. One, five to eight, one, four to eight. And finally, infinities. Okay, maybe I incorrectly add or, or I incorrectly find the towers. Let's check both. First of all, I need this. I need to look at this. Let's look at the, uh, the number V. So 102. One, 
one zero two yes so this is totally fine one is three one zero a lot three one zero and a lot yes so this is fine so maybe i add them incorrectly yeah because this is just too little so let's recalculate something okay for example let's look at this so we have uh this and we have b let's look at them 102 infinity 310 infinity so 10 infinity 2 and three one zero infinity three one zero infinity also also i i don't want to check it i i want to check only if it is incorrect Let's look at S. So N is 4. So this is not interesting. Now 3. 3 says what? So the sum of 6 and 7 is just 3? No. No, it shouldn't be. What is n? n is 2? Ah, because this should be 1. <clears throat> I didn't think about that. So, 9, 7, 5? Oh my god. This will take a while. This nice debugging. So let's look into its team. Ans is nine. Why is it nine? None of this is correct. Why is it four? Okay, we, we really need to check the separation. That's it. We just need to check the separation. So first of all, the answer is 5, easily. The answer is 5 simply because there is here five, 2 and here 3. But also this number 3 should transfer to this number 3, so it actually should increase. So transferred value is 1, added to ans 2. Yeah, I just needed to say that answer dot ans plus equals added to ans two.
now it's 12, but after that it's 13. So why? There are 5 liters of water in tower 2 and 4. Liters of water stone. <clears throat> Okay, it changed it to five and one. It's it's simply impossible for it to be such a big number because the sum of B's is simply twelve. Let's investigate it. So we have, let's look at it, X, Xi, Yi, Zi, and Pi. So this is changed to 5, let's write it near it, 5 and 1. How is possible? I don't know. So, first of all, what do we add? We add these two things. 1, 0, 2. Yes, one zero two and one oh four. One oh no, one oh four. So the answer, let's look at the answer, let's just look at it. So what is the answer? What do you think? So you answer. So you think that the answer is 2 and this is fine. BVI is 0 and this is fine. Transferred liquid is 6 and it is, it is 6, yes. And uh, capacity is infinite. Yes, I agree. Then it adds something else. Again, so now we have six five zero six five. What five? No way, it shouldn't be. Why is it so big? It's not what I, what I worked with. Why trash should be 6? What? Two plus three. Come again. So again, answer should be a Two zero six this yes and it is two 
206. SI is S2I. Again, so S2I should be 206. But now we look into this. Okay, yeah, this this is definitely what I expected. It, it is okay, yeah. Okay, and this is 650. So it is 60 infinity 2 and 6 5 It shouldn't be 5. Why is it 5? It should be 4. So, this is incorrect, actually. This is incorrect. Let's recalculate it again. Actually, the construction seems not reasonable. Because this element S3 should be 640. Let's look again into it. Okay, I think we needed to do the following. We needed to say like this, then like this, and then answer.bvi should be minus equals added to unscrew. Twelve to ten, sixty-seven. Why is it sixty-seven? How am I supposed to check it if it is sixty-seven? Such a huge number. Oh God, God. Ah. Oh. Thirty four, and I think that it is sixty seven. Okay, we don't have any time to be slow here. Let's check it. Okay, five four nine. <clears throat> I, again, I believe in function tower, so let's just pretend that it is correct. Find dance. So we jump here. And it is already... Okay, I, ne I need to check it, I, I think. 33881. Hmm. Then zero one two zero zero. And the quantities are seven zero zero one one. 
seven zero zero one one okay let's check what it actually says it actually says that the first block for example is ten three ten three yes the second is three four yes eight ten Yes, nine eight. Yes, and finally two one. Yes. The first operation says that the fifth block is four nine infinity. So now it's four nine infinity. Let's look at it. Now it's tower. Four nine infinity. So four five yeah. Four and five. Now it does something. Okay, let's look at the recalculation with recalculations which it does. So SI we are where I is four. So it's like ninth element. Then four is eight plus nine. So I just add I just add these two numbers. Let's see. Okay, maybe I added something what I shouldn't have. Let's check the function sum, maybe. From, from 5 to 10. Okay, let's look at L and R. Let's just look at L and R. And now it's suddenly really big. So L and R, 5 and 10. So I add 1 to L. And then divide them by 2. Yeah, then I again add 1. Ah, it should be minus minus r. Done. So you see how it is important to be able to write a segment tree. What? What? Ah, it's fine. 30... Well, it's not fine because it should be 34, but at least it is within some natural... ...borders. Okay. Let's look at our date. So first of all, it says that we will take fifth element, which is simply 307. Yes, and this is 307. Okay. And then it is divided by 2. Now we have third element, which is the sum of the sixth and the seventh. So we add it. So 
So what I expect here is the sum of all three things. Let's think how it works. Let's think how it works. It seems that it should be something like 14 in the answer. It should be something like... So I don't have any blocking capacities, so it's simply like 3. And at most... No, it's not 3. It's like... From... So... It's like uh, 14 plus 3 because of this 7 which fills this 1 and 2. So it should be 17 without number and 4 goes to the right. 1704. So this is what I expect. No. Why BVI is 3? It's 3. It's, it's 3. It it is not it's not good. So let's check again. What do I what do I expect and what do I get? This and B. Do I have a time actually? Not much. Not much. This is because we have. A lot of data structures. So this seven should definitely fill this BVI. Transfers is tra. I hate this. I just hate this. Oh my god. Do I really need it to just uh, check it accurately? Now it's 31. It's still not fine. Oh. Okay, so now it is here, it's 18, no, it shouldn't be 18, so again, the same thing didn't work well. Now it says that BVI is 4, but it shouldn't have. Why is BVI 4? I think we need to look here. Okay, let's look here. So we have three one zero, three one zero, and eight two zero. I believe it should be eleven three zero. So what is transferred? Nothing. So nothing is added to the answer. Ah, because I do something wrong here. Oh, okay, let's think. Oh my god. Well, let's fix it a, a little. So let's put it. Okay, let me think. So we have our BVI.
actually answer BVI should be sum of left BVI and the right BVI. So let, let, let's look at what happens. We have two things happening here. So, what is its BVI? Let's put it into the variable second BVI. Second BVI. It is okay to do. First of all, we say that it cannot be greater than cap. It is okay to, to say, okay, we did it. No, it's not okay to do. First of all, we need to subtract this number. First of all, we needed to subtract this number. So first of all, we say LL second BVI equals B dot BVI. Let's think. I should subtract tra. So I need to do this. Then I subtract. I add it to the answer, of course. I subtract it from the second BVI. Second BVI minus equals uh, added to ans2 and transferred minus equals added to ans2. So this is what always transfers to the right side. Then I need to cut it because Okay, what do I say then? So what is my answer BVI? First of all, it's simply BVI, always, it is simply BVI. Then, I need to subtract I need to cap it by capacity, which I did. I transfer everything into capacity and into the second BVI, yes. So it should be fine this time. This is not correct. Thirty-four, twenty-five, twenty-nine, twenty-one, twenty-seven, twelve, twelve, ten. Okay, let's look at the next problem. Eleven eight five thirty one twenty five twenty nine twenty one twenty three. Yes, this is what I needed. 
spend so much time and it still can be way okay let's believe in us shouldn't we Actually, F2 is tested faster than F1. Oh my. So I still have problem E. So there is a hidden array. Consisting of one and minus one. P is for the prefix sums. Then P is sorted in non-decreasing order. We give we are given prefix sum, but we don't know the array A. If we need to count the number of initial arrays A, which result in this P. Okay, this is some sort of math. Problem. Oh. oh god. Terrible participation. Okay, let's think. So we have plus one plus ones and minus ones, which resulted in summary. Let's prepare the testing environment for this problem. So instead of all these segment trees, I simply need int find dance const vip. That's it. Here I just read the array, don't I? Okay. So plus one, my ones and minus ones resulted in an array. So they sorted it, and we need to find the number of initial arrays. Okay, let's find the maximum number, which is m. For each m, there is m minus 1. Yeah? So actually, let's remove all m's and the corresponding m, m minus 1's. Okay? So we have something like this, where there are several m minus 1's. 
And actually, each of these m's looks like this. You added m and you subtracted one immediately after that. And you can add this in any place where there is m minus 1. So the answer can be multiplied by the number of m minus 1s, minus number of m's, of course, times pm. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to. Do the following. So so we say let's say that we have some positive numbers. So if pi is at least zero, ah, uh, it is prefix sums. So in the end, it can be any of the numbers actually. So the ma the other way is that you finish with this number. This is also unfortunately it is also possible. Ah, I, I can iterate over the total sum. I can iterate over the total sum. So let's choose the total sum. I don't have enough time if we are honest with this. But let's try. Okay, so we need to find us with some fixed sum. So if If s is less than zero, let's change all signs. So now s is non negative. Okay, so now, now let's go from the big number to the small number, numbers. So we have several numbers. Uh... So we have some positive number k. There are several cases. Either it 
finishes our sequence. So it has to be there. So let's say that if cos i is at most zero, then return zero and that's it. My god. Okay, now let's assume that Let's assume that it is not, so it is there, so let's subtract 1. Now every other k has to be on one of these positions. So it's like choose number. What, which choose number? Choose number of form PK plus PK minus one minus one and PK something like this. So we need ans equals product of answer p so also if pos i is greater than pos i minus one then all the return zero. Otherwise, I subtract 1. Now, pos i is a strictly less than pi minus 1. And I need to multiply it by some choose number, which is what? Which is what? For example, if I have something like this, then I only have one choice. So it should be choose PK minus one and PK like this, something like this. What if I have four points and these two points? Then I can have three choices. Yes, it seems like I need to take pos i minus one minus one and pos i. Then I need to say that pos i minus one minus equals pos i. Mm -hmm. Then the same thing for the negative numbers. The same thing, then if cos 0 is not 1, then return 0, else return ans, and also I need initially 
add, add, add zero. It would be nice if I had some template with factorials, but unfortunately I don't have. This is sad that I didn't solve this problem because of absence of the template. <sighs> Still, I didn't have enough time, so I don't believe it will be the correct answer. It shouldn't have happened. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Fine. I had an error, so here I needed to check. That if I is at least is is it most s, then I needed to do this. I needed to subtract, and if it is negative, then return here. Again, for some reason it is negative.
Okay, after all these shenanigans, it should be like this. All zeros. <clears throat> Not like this. Okay, so S equals The second thing should not should not be um, P equals one. Yeah. So S should be when sh uh, S is one, it should be not zero. Okay, this happens. <laughs> oh my god. Well, actually it's not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. Oh. It's not funny. Actually, this is, this is not okay, this is not okay, this is really sad, 21st century and we have this thing, what is it? Data structure, let's continue debugging and after that I also will somehow explain you the problems <sighs> okay let's see I don't need to make so many bugs. Okay, so now this is incorrect. Third test, minus one, one, two. And it definitely is incorrect because there are no zeros. So the total sum should be, I don't know what. Let's see, how did it return the answer? 
it returned the answer for s equals one for some reason let's see yeah i can Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if pause is negative S is one I is I is one already. And again, okay. So if I is at most S, yes, it is at most S. I need to subtract it. And, and continue. Great, but also we have some positive numbers. How does it work with them? Okay, now we have this thing and S doesn't exist at all. So now if it is negative, nothing. If it is greater than the previous one, then also not fine. Actually, if this is true, okay, if it is zero, then continue. But if it is at least the previous one, this is not fine. Okay. Zero. So now it, it 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 works. One zero zero one zero. Now only this test doesn't work. Let's look at it. So it says zero, although it should be three. Okay. For example, sum can be one in this case. Let's look at the sum one. Where is Vector so long? Ah. So let's check S equals 1. Okay, so sum is one, pause is a known array, i is five. So let's look at i equals one. So the answer is two. Because 
this thing could be put either before this or after this. Yeah, so it's okay that there are two options actually. It's fine. Oh no! I understand what's going on. Do I? Yeah, I think I understand what's going on. I believe I should understand what's going on, yeah. So it's two. Okay, now we are looking at the negative numbers, so this should be, and this is totally okay, it should be just left as two. So i equals one. y minus oh this is incorrect we shouldn't do it three okay maybe it's already solved Okay, I think we are not allowed to absolve before the contest is tested, aren't we? Okay, there is system testing. We are too ret uh, retarded for this contest, guys. We are too retarded. So come again. Can I can I submit this problem? Seventeen minutes and I spent almost two hours. Hour and a half on this problem only. Dynamic programming. We didn't use any dynamic programming. We have quadratic solution because we check one number in linear time. Okay, to not spend extra time, let me begin my editorial, I only will be explaining problems from A to F too, and the problem E will not be uh, based on DP. So if you want the DP solution, please check the editorial. But we will start with problem, with problem A. Wallet exchange. Alice and Bob are bored. They decided to play a game with their wallets. Alice has A coins, while Bob has B coins. Both players take turns playing, and each player d does the two things. First of all, he chooses to exchange or not to exchange the wallet, and he removes one coin. They remove one coin from their wallet. The player who cannot move loses. Determine who will, who will win the game. So this is a pseudo game it doesn't depend on there is no like optimal way to play this game you only need to not lose on the current turn what i mean by that is let's look at the sum of two wallets always it is uh, decreased by one so if everyone with uh, uh, let's assume that if s is positive then player can move so if we have the assumption then the result is based on parity 
of A plus B. Why is that? Because each turn S is decreased by is uh, yeah decreased by one. So if the assumption is true, then no matter how they and what they do, the sum always is decreased by one. And when S is zero, it is obvious that player loses. So we have that if S is I think maybe you need an example, for example, s equals 4, then Alice has 4, she subtracts 1 and gives it to the Bob, not there, just to the to, to Bob. Bob subtracts 1 and gives 2 to Alice, then two, Alice gives 1 to Bob. Bob is still able to subtract 1 and give 0 to Alice. And Alice loses. So even A plus B means that Bob wins. Uh, odd A plus B means that Alice wins. Okay, let's prove the assumption. It's actually really easy. Assume that S is greater than zero. Then either A is greater than zero or B is greater than zero. If A is greater than zero, then you just try to get the wallet A, and then you can subtract 1 and make a move. If B is greater than 0, then you try to swap or not swap the wallets in such way that you get this wallet, and you subtract 1 from it. So the assumption is really easy, and the solution after the assumption is also really easy. Uh, problem B. We have a string consisting of pluses and minuses. We have the following process. We split A into non-empty arrays. Then the penalty is... Uh, the sum in this array, where plus is 1 and minus is minus 1. The sum of this array times the length of this array. And the total penalty is the sum of these numbers. You want to find the minimum possible penalty you will receive. Sum of sum of ci's times m This is your penalty. First of all, notice That you can always get the answer n, where n is the length of the whole array of the string, because you can just take everything separately. So each point is taken separately. Plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, minus. It seems optimal at first glance, yeah, because this penalty is the product of this number and this number and you actually don't have any reason to increase your answer by increasing this m so when you make this number big you multiply your answer by quite a big number okay for example if your disbalance is two you would rather have two here or one, not one million. It seems reasonable to make it as thorough as possible, this separation. However, it is okay to have a big M if this is zero. For example, in this case, you can easily uh, decrease the answer by six by pairing up these numbers or these numbers, or, the, or these numbers, or them, them all at once. Okay? So it actually doesn't feel good, I'd say, uh, to... So, you, you have like two forces. One force 
asks you to not have big segments and the other says that you want big segments but with some zero if you have a segment which is of size at least no, no matter of which size if this sum is not zero then you pay at least m for it yeah but in this case you can just make m different segments and you still pay m so actually there are two types of segments single element and array with zero sum there are two possible elements in your separation let's think about uh, how to optimize it yeah so since this always gives you zero and this gives you one you just want to minimize the number of single elements how to do it notice that if you have an array with a zero sum it has zero sum so if the total sum of the array is s when you remove everything from here it is still s so sum of elements from item one is s and this means that there are at least absolute value of s such elements so your answer will be at least modulus of sum of all numbers you cannot make any lower yeah again you have some disbalance you have two times of items and the second item never change your changes your balance the number of pluses minus the number of minuses so all the this balance is still here you cannot get rid of it other than just take it one by one all this disbalance the question is can you make exactly ci this is easy for example i will consider the case s equals three but all other cases are treated in the same way so let's look at the prefix sums the initial prefix sum is zero the last prefix sum is three yeah let's look at the no notice that each time the prefix sum either increases by one or decreases by one it cannot be anything else so if it became three it also at some point became two and became one let's consider the very first moment when it became one so all oh all way down here it was at most zero but now it is the first time one notice that it cannot be two here yeah let's let's cut one element it cannot be two because in this case there was another one place where the sum was one it is impossible so this sum is definitely zero then you can just take this segment add it to the answer as number two and take this single element and put it in the first item now you continue the same procedure notice that now the sum is one at some moment it will become two let's find the very first moment when it became two the moment before that it was still one and this means that this sum was zero then you can put it here and you can put this element in the first bucket and finally we have two through three then there is some first moment when it became three this moment it was two then you take this block and this block make them zero sum and the, this single element will be with unit sum with negative sum it is explicitly the same just change all positive numbers with negative in my reasoning and if the total sum is also zero then you can just take the whole array and uh, use it as a type 2 block 
So the answer is always the absolute value of the sum of the elements. That's enough for the problem B. Now let's look at the problem C. Grouping increases. We need to split an array into two subsequences such that the penalty, that is, the number of increasing pairs of adjacent numbers is minimized. The total penalty you will receive is the sum in these two subsequences. So is it said that it is greedy? Yeah, it said greedy. Why does it say that it is greedy? Well, what is a greedy approach um, in general? In general, you have some sort of dynamic programming. Yeah, you have some sort of dynamic programming. And unfortunately, it has a lot of states. Yeah, So to calculate some sub-problem, you need a lot of other sub-problems to get it. The greedy approach states that usually there are only little number, only a few of states which are actually needed, and other of them are just unoptimal. So you have some proof or some uh, hand waving that you don't need most of the states and you don't use them in the transitions, you only use one or two. This approach is called greedy. Why it's called greedy? Because it is like locally optimal. You don't think about the global picture, you only look at the local picture. And locally, you do what seems the best thing. It might not be the best globally, but it's best locally. And greedy approach works when actually it can be proved that uh, the local optimal solution is also the globally optimal solution. What else could be called a greedy approach is just reducing the size of your state. For example, your state can be consisting of several things. The greedy approach is to say, for example, that you always need zero here, or you always need n minus one here. You just eliminate some states because you know that the optimal answer cannot be reached via dp1, or even it can, but if it can, it can also be reached via this element. You just eliminate the elements which are not required for the optimal solution. Let's see how it works here. Yeah, the most obvious DP in this problem is the following. So you have an array, you consider its prefix, and you consider that it is already divided into two subsequences. Let's look at two things where these subsequences end. The first subsequent ends, ends somewhere here and the second ends somewhere here. First thing you, that you notice is that uh, well let me first of all um, continue this solution. So you have dp like ij k uh, which means if you have in prefix i a subsequence which ends with j and a subsequence which ends with k, what is the answer in this prefix? Minimum answer, assuming that you end here and here. Then you can recalculate it easily. But before that, I will say that the first optimization you, that you can make is to notice that 
since these are subsequences <coughs> which divide this prefix, in particular, this element is definitely somewhere. It is either in the first uh, sequence or in the second sequence. So actually, you can assume that j equals i or k equals i. Moreover, there is no difference in... Actually, you can say that it is XOR. It cannot be both. <coughs> because <coughs> these two sequences cannot intersect. Also, you might notice that if you swap them, you can or not swap them. You can guarantee that ith element is here. So you can actually guarantee that j equals i and k does not equal i. So now you can only have two states, dp, i, k, not two states, but two dimensions in your state. So answer. in prefix i if two sequences end with i and k this is your answer how do you continue it how do you continue it so you say that dp i plus 1 i is simply minimum for all j <clears throat> which are less than i of what you take dp i j and you replace the jth element with i plus first element so you need to check is it true that is it vector a yeah, it is vector a. Is it true that a j is greater, is less than a i plus 1? This is for i plus 1 and i. Also, you can have dp i plus 1 j, where j is less than i. And this is simply dp uh, i uh, j plus the indicator that a i plus one is less than a i is less than a i plus one. So this is your dynamic programming. This can be calculated in O of n squared time because just these elements take this time and these elements take linear time. However, the greedy approach states that you don't need a lot of different elements here. Actually, it can be easily determined which element you want here. If you are familiar with the approach of calculating the longest increasing subsequence, you know that when you want some increasing subsequence, you are interested or decreasing. Now, in our case, it's decreasing or non increasing, which is also false because actually it can may have some increases, but the number should be minimized. But uh, the idea is the same. So, if you want as, as few increases as possible, then at every moment you want your last element to be as big as possible. Yeah, so assuming that we have two sequences, they are kind of the same, but in the first of them, the last element is 40, and in the second of them, the last element is 20. And you are checking if you can add some number x. So it will be easier to add it here than here. Because if x, x is at least, because if x is at most 20, then it adds 0 here and adds 0 here, like here and here. So it doesn't change the answer in, in any of them. If x is between 20 and 40, then it doesn't 
increase the first answer, but it increases the second one, and if x is at least 40, is greater than 40, then it increases both answers. There is no situation in which 20 is better than 40, so you always want 40. If all other uh, parameters are equal, you just want the maximum possible last element of your uh, sequence. Let's prove that actually this is true. What I want to say is you might assume that if you take your optimal division into two subsequences, and cut it anywhere, then you might assume that one of these sequences ends, is, ends in position i, and the other one ends in position j, such that aj is maximized over all partitions with, with the same ans. With the same ans as in this part. So you cut this part away, you calculate the answer here, the, the penalty. And actually, among all possible ways with this penalty, aj is maximized. This is easy to prove. So, let's consider this. So, uh, first of all, I will explain my greedy approach, and then I will prove that it is optimal. The greedy approach is as follows. At each moment, we store three numbers. Our last element, last element of second sequence, and current answer. That's it. Now you have the next element. How do you change it, change everything? First of all, you will always have this next element. You cannot get rid of it. It will always be in our pair. So if it will be in our pair, we want to maximize. Actually, uh, it doesn't matter which of these is last element and which is last element of the second sequence. Let's call them bigger one and the less one. So this will be called E and this will be called E. Capital E and small e. And we have new element F. And E is at least E. So let's consider three cases. So if F is here, then it is small. Since we don't want our pair to, to have small numbers, we, we, we choose between f e and f e. Which of this is better? This is better because it has bigger numbers. f is the same, but e is bigger. So you choose this one. Uh, okay, let's assume that f is here, between the numbers. At first glance, you still need to choose this because it has bigger numbers. But actually, the correct way is this. So what you want to do is take your two sequences, one ending with E small and one ending with capital E. And you want to add F here, not here. Not here. Why not here? Because if you add element F here, it will increase the answer by one. And if you add f here, yes, it will make this pair 
instead of this pair, and this is really small pair, EF, but still it won't increase your answer by one, it will increase, by, increase it by zero because EF is not an increasing pair. And finally, if F is greater than E, then you again choose this pair because in both cases you just have to increment your answer. So you always choose one of two sequences in such a, a way that the first priority is to increment your answer by as little as possible and the second priority is to make this pair lexicograph lexicographically smallest. Now I want to explain why it is optimal. Uh, yeah, because if this is true, then our algorithm works. Because it always... Let me think. Uh, this algorithm, algorithm is optimal because... Well, let me explain why it is optimal. So assume that this is the answer generated by our greedy algorithm, and this is the optimal answer. So this is the optimal answer, and this is the greedy answer. Let's consider the first position No, 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 sorry. First of all, I will prove, I will prove the following, that there is an optimal answer with this condition. So, in any prefix, current partition, partial answer has max, minimum possible answer. And among these answers, it has maximum second number in sequence, last number. So assume that this is the optimal answer. Assume that this thing is wrong. This means that either this is not true or this is not true. Let's consider both cases. First of all, ans prefix i is not optimal. So let's consider the prefix with the optimal ans. So here we have some ans l, and here we have some opt l. Also, we have some ans r. And let's just take ans r here. So we have the same sequences here as here. How do we pair them up? Yeah, see, so there are two ways to swap these elements and two ways to swap these elements. And here there are also two ways to connect either this way or this way. How do we do it? Actually, in the upper picture, let's look at the sequence which has the last element. And let's make the same order. So I still want... So this one is this one. Uh, this one is this one. And uh, in both cases I take the upper one sequence which has the ith element in the end. Okay? So, what is the answer? Actually, uh, in the bottom case, the answer is opt L plus ans R and plus this penalty, which is called P2, and plus this penalty, which is P1. And in the upper case, 
we have um, ans l plus ans r plus this penalty which we will call q1 and this penalty which we will call q2 okay so let's look at the same numbers first of all answer r is same as answer r they are just same also notice that since this sequence ends with the same number as this sequence actually p1 equals q1 so also we can cancel out these numbers sorry okay so we want to prove that opt l plus p2 is at most ans l plus q2 and there are two cases first case is if ans left us is not optimal so actually this is at least opt plus one then the inequality is obvious yeah, because you are left with the following inequality p2 is at most 1 plus q2 and simply even p2 is at most 1 yeah, because p2 and q2 are 0 or 1 or ones. so this is obvious this is obvious and this is obvious this was the case when optimum tl is uh, strictly less than answer L. the second case is when they are optimum so answer pi is opt this means that these cancel out and we just need to ask if is it true that p2 is at most q2 when do you when do you need to pay p2 when do you need to pay it you need to pay it when let it call b when you and then b minus one is strictly less than c zero and let this uh sequence be b b small so this let me let me uh show it with a closer and give you a closer look So the first sequence is not interesting. The second sequence in answer it is B and in optimum it is B. And we are interested in this penalty which is P two sorry it's q q two and in this penalty which is p two so what is q two q two is one if last element of b is less than the first element of c c is the same in both answers and p two is b is b capital b minus one less than c zero notice that actually the second one implies the first one so if this is true then this is true why because by our optimality I took, well, I took the maximum possible answer, or minimum possible answer, and among all ways of choosing the max, uh, the minimum possible answer, I took the least, the maximum possible last element of the second sequence, which is B. So, since answers are equal, B minus one is optimized is maximized actually
among all these so this means that actually b minus 1 is at most is at least b minus 1 and this means that if this is smaller than some number c0 then by implication c0 is even bigger than this number this means that um, p2 is at most q2 and this means that here we have p2 is at most q2 so we have answer which is same optimal or more optimal okay okay now we need to understand why our answer is optimal well if at some moment we make another choice then we violate this condition yeah if at some moment we don't choose to do what i explained here no what i explained uh here yeah if you don't do what you explained here yeah so you store two maximum last elements and you replace one of them with the new element depending on is it between them or not and increase the answer also in some cases you increment it by one and in some cases you don't if you don't do it as i said then you violate this condition. So actually you just have to do it. And you get one of the optimal answers. Okay. Let's absolve problem E. Because I wanted to do it. I still cannot. Ah, here it is. Ah, well, it's fine. It's fine. Problem D. Problem D. Okay, let's look at the tutorial, but I, I, I have some solution. But maybe this problem had an easier solution that I came up with. Okay, no, no, no. I will explain my solution because it has a better asymptotics. Then I will say what they mean what they meant for doing this problem you have some tree binary complete binary tree and on each edge there is a number it's always zero or one moreover each vertex which we will call internal which is not a leaf it has exactly two edges, and exactly one of them is zero, and exactly one of them is one. But they can be vice versa, so it can be like this. After that, for each leaf, you calculate the total sum of edges on this path. So you know the list of all leaves in the same order as they appear in the DFS, DFS what? 
just DFS order. And for each of them, you know the sum uh, at this path. And you needed to calculate the sum of, uh, you needed to say if there is a tree with this condition, at least one. Let's understand if there is some tree with this condition or not. So my idea was the following. So assume that you have some long, long path which ends with two leaves. Yeah, there is always some path which ends in two, with two leaves. For example, let's assume that the sum here is 18. Then one of these leaves will have 18 and the other will have 19. So these numbers are paired up. You may notice that uh, you, you may have the following idea. Let's take just two numbers. And if they are adjacent and if the difference is one, let's just remove them. Let's look what happens when we remove these both leaves. Now we have only one leaf and it has number 18. So we can replace them with A. Or easily you can just remove the number A plus 1 if it has a neighbor of A. You can remove it if, if it has A either to the left or to the right. In the end you need to only get root so you only need to get 0. This is necessary condition that you, this is sufficient condition that you get zero. Yeah, so if you got zero in the end, then that means that there is some tree, some structure, which is uh, completely defined by, by what you did during the process. And in the end, if you got zero, that means that this structure is correct. However, if you didn't get an array of only one zero, that doesn't necessarily mean that you uh, had the correct tree. And no, no, that doesn't mean that you didn't have the correct tree. In, in other words, what we did here is some sort of greedy approach. But in this problem, such a greedy approach doesn't work. We need some more clever approach. Let me show you an example. Assume that you have the following array. 0, 1, 2. You might try to look at it from the left to the right. You see 0, you see 1, and you say, oh, that means that I can replace it with 0. And j just remove this one. So now you have 0 and 2. And this is no more a correct array. This is not a correct array because you cannot remove this two. It does not have a neighbor of one. However, the initial array was possible to represent as a tree. For example, zero, one, and two. So this array and this tree are connected, but this array without one is not possible to make. So our greasy approach does not work. However, you might notice that this didn't work because this element one was, yeah, it was big, it was bigger than zero, but still it was smaller than two. And you don't really want to remove an element until it is totally useful, useless. So let's call an element useless if element a useless if we don't need to eliminate a plus one with this A. Okay? So for example, this element 1 
was not wasn't useful. It was useful. It wasn't useless. It wasn't useless because you actually needed this element to eliminate two. And after you you have eliminated two, you have this one uh, useless now. So if we have a useless element, we can do the separation. So if a is useless and if it has a minus one near it, you can just remove a. It's fine. However, we have a problem. We don't know initially which elements are useless and which are not. The next idea you can come across is that the maximum number m is always useless. You cannot use it to remove m plus 1 because there is no m plus 1 at all. So element m is always useful, useless, where m is the maximum. So the only thing you can do with m is just uh, remove it. Is it true that m has to have m minus 1 near it? Or here or here? No, it is not true. The only way it can be, however, is you have several m's and then m minus 1. Then you cannot remove this m right now, but you can if you firstly remove these m's. Mm -hmm. So, so what? So the top to bottom approach is, a, is as follows. Let's find the maximum element. Then we need to check. Let's find the maximum element. Then let's find the group of maximum elements. Yeah, so we go to the left and to the right until we find the leftmost and the rightmost element M in this group of consecutive m's. Then we check if there is m minus 1 here or here. If there is, you can remove this whole group. If there is no, you return uh, no. Also, if m is 0, then instead return that group size is 1. <clears throat> this is top to bottom approach. It works in n log n time. How? You need to find maximum element and you need to remove it from the list. Actually, it's not really easy to remove something from the list because usually you store things with a vector and you cannot remove an element from a vector in O of one time. You need linear time for it. Yes, you can use some um, sets, for example. Yeah, you can use set, uh, which is how it's called, parameterized by the position, position and the element. So it will be a set of pair, pair of int int. Or also you can have map int int. Also, you can just use a linked list. You can use a linked list. How? So you ha you have a, some a linked list, list of ints, and what your set does is it stores the pointers to the elements of this list. So you have some set or some priority queue. You take the maximum element from it and it says I lie in this point of the linked list. Then you remove it from the priority queue and you perform this procedure. You go to the right, you go to the left, you find all the elements in your block of consecutive maximum numbers.
actually you need to somehow check that you removed an element from the priority queue okay, you do it somehow okay for example you can store in this element if it was already removed or not so you have a lot of m's consecutive <clears throat> then you have m minus one and if you have then you remove them if you don't then you return null okay this was top to bottom approach but i solved the problem using bottom to top approach <clears throat> To do that, I used something called sparse table. Let me explain. So assume that you have some number zero, for example. First of all, you need to check that it is the only minimum in the array. You can find all minima using sparse table really easily. <clears throat> not, not all minima. You can find, actually, you can find all minima really easily. In, you can find them in all of minima, of the number of minima time. How do you do it? So if you have some segment and you need to find the minimum, with your sparse table, you just find the leftmost minimum. Here it is. Now you know that here you don't have any minima left, but you can have some minima here. And you just run the same function for this half of the array. This way you can find all minima in this time. Okay, let's assume that you found them. In the case of zero, you cannot have a lot of them. But if you have something else, Okay, let's assume that you have zero, only one zero. Then what you need to check? You need to check for this half and for this half that they are correct relative to this zero. What is it to be rel uh, correct relative to this zero? This thing should be either empty, and in this case, this is correct, or there should be at least one one, and this should be a correct set of trees with roots 1. So this uh, is a tree rooted with 0. And this is one or several uh, trees which are rooted in 1. How do we check them? To check them, uh, let's like uh, write some functions. So first function is check tree check tree from l to r it checks if some set of numbers forms a correct tree and also let's uh, give the number root since i have already a number r i will call the root c c is the number which will be in the root so in the check tree you find Uh, find minimum in LR and notice that this function finds element uh, element index not the value it finds the index then you check that a root is C and if it is not, then false. It is impossible. So let's assume that the root is C. Then you just need to check. Uh, so the root is C. You need to check that this is a forest of C plus ones, and this is a forest of C plus ones. So check forest 
of L root minus 1 and C plus 1. And check forest of root, sorry, of root. Yeah, should be root without minus 1. Root plus 1, R and C plus 1. Why do I write like this? If you have some array, you rather define it by its first element and the first element which is not in the array. So you use semi interval. So LR as a semi interval is L, L plus 1, etc., R minus 1. It is really convenient to use because its size is always R minus L, the number of elements. Uh, so when you have some root, you divide your segment uh, semi 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 interval into three parts: the root itself, the semi interval from L to the root, and the semi interval from the root plus one to R. So that's why I used L and root, and here root plus one and R. So let's check how we find the forest. Check forest. So we need to find all minima. A1, etc. An equals find minima. LRC. Find minima from L to R. Then you check that they are all equal to C. So if A, A first is not equal to C, then return false. Also, if R minus L equals 0, then true. Yeah, because this array is empty, then uh, no elements, then this is a correct forest. Finally, you have some numbers C. And all numbers between them are greater than C. Then you just take each of the segments and check that it is a correct forest of C plus 1. This is what you do. So for, each of it, for each of them, you just check if it is a C plus 1 uh, forest. What I did is check the following. I found only the first minimum. I checked that this is a C plus 1 forest, and this is either C or C plus 1 forest. You may notice that I, in my recursion, uh, reduced to this segment two times, because I first of all asked about it with root C, and with root c plus 1. However, I will not spend a lot of time because I will understand which of these cases is true in O of one time. Yeah, Because if I find, first of all, if this segment is empty, it is immediately a forest. If it is not empty, I can find its minimum in in O of one time using a sparse table. After that, I can check if this minimum is C, C plus 1, or something else. If something else, then immediately no. If C, then I check this function. And if C plus 1, then I check this function. So, that's it. If you want to know how sparse table works, Link is not in the description because you can Google sparse table. So there is a top to bottom approach and bottom to top approach. And I used uh, bottom to top because I really don't didn't know how to find an element in a linked list. Yeah, with uh, a priority queue mo uh, most nicely. So I decided not to mess with it. And that's it.
the problem E, counting prefixes. This is a nice problem. And I am really sad that I was not able to solve it in a lot of time. But life is life. Let's again look at the solution. Yeah, sorry, but Oh, well, it's not really interesting. I mean, it's the same as my solution. So in this problem, you are given some array pi. What is this array pi? You are said that there is some array ai, which consists of ones and minus ones. Then you are said that your pi is just prefix sums of ai. Yeah, for example, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, etc. You might say, well, it's an easy problem. You calculate ai using pi. You can just take uh, p1, p2 minus 1, p1. P3 minus P2, P4 minus P3, etc. And this will be the elements of AI. Yes, but actually no, because before this array PI is given to you, in the end it is sorted. So you only know the multi set of these elements, but know their order, not their order. And you are asked how many ways are there to choose the initial array of ones and minus ones to get something with the same multiset as pi. That's it. Let's go. Firstly, let's assume that you know that the sum of all elements is zero. If you know that the sum of all elements is zero, then I can solve this problem in O of n time. The only reason that in the problem n equals 5000 is that s is unknown. So we will need to iterate over all possible s, calculate the answer in O of n time for each of these s, add them up, and get the total answer. Unfortunately, you really don't know the uh, number s. You need to guess it. Guess it. One possible optimization immediately is to say that um, s is of same parity as n is. For example, if n is 5, then s should be odd number between minus n and n. Yeah, so basically, when I wrote uh, the cycle, I said for s i equals minus n, s is at most n, s plus plus, do something. Actually, here you can just write s plus equals 2, and it will speed your code by, the, by a factor of 2. Let's just check it immediately that I can do it. So in my problem I can write s plus equals 2 and it will be first uh, by a factor of 2. Let's check. So I take my solution, I submit it and it will, it will be like 70 milliseconds. And something like this, yeah, you see. 
So this is a nice optimization. It is not needed because for me it's not needed because my solution is still really fast. But if you need it, you can run only the same parity as n. Okay. So assume S is the same parity. Now, let's take, uh, for now, let's assume that S equals zero. Also notice that you don't have the initial zero. Actually, there is also, should be one more zero, which indicate, which corresponds to the sum of zero elements. It is not there in PI, let's add it. So. The length of p will be n plus 1 because of this extra 0. Let's assume that it is there in our array. Okay. For now, I will make one more assumption. Let's for now th assume that all pi's are at least 0. Let's just assume that they are at least 0. It will just make my explanation easier. You might notice that many of the problems of this contest are solved in the same manner. So, for example, the previous problem D can be solved if you consider the maximum in the array. C is something about maxima. B is not about maxima. A is not about maxima. But D and E are both about the same idea. You need to consider the maximum. So let's look at the maximum of our array M. Notice that since S equals zero, in the beginning you had zero sum. L let's just order PI in the correct order. You just, what you need really is to calculate the number of correct orderings of PI. Yes, yeah, so if you graph it, it, it looks like this. And this is the element M. Notice that since it is the maximum element, then it is surrounded by two elements M minus one. Moreover, you can get the answer without these two elements if you just remove them both and you continue uh, your mounting as if it was without these two elements. You can just remove the maximum and the second maximum from the array. I meant maximum and maximum minus one from the array without changing anything. Let's just assume that we have some pref uh, some uh, array f such that f i is the number of occurrences of i in pi, in array p. Yeah? So first of all, you need to check that actually, if m is greater than zero, so if, uh, let's write, so if m equals zero, if your maximum is zero, then uh, you just need to check that f zero is one. And you just return it if you want. Let's me let me rewrite it. If it is not one, then return all uh, return zero. Else return answer. Let's assume that m is greater than zero. This means that it should be surrounded by two numbers m minus one, and this means that in particular you know that fm is greater than is is less than m fm minus one okay let's remove all such pairs and now we have a mountain with maximum at most m minus one actually exactly m minus one if you know this inequality so if it is not true then again return zero so you have several m minus ones. Let's draw them as some positions. Now you have fm pairs of m and m minus one, 
and you need to add the, these pairs into some of these points. How many ways are there to do it? Actually, the, the problem can be reformulated, reformulated as the following. You have several uh, plates, you have like K plates, and you have M pickles. The pickles are indistinguishable. You need to put all M pickles on these K plates and calculate the number of ways to do it. This problem can be reformulated as follows. You need to find the number of solutions of the following uh, equation. M equals x1 plus etc. plus xk, where all these numbers are non-negative and they are, are integers. You need to calculate the number of uh, solutions. So these two problems are equivalent because choosing how many pickles on each plate is just uh, enough to choose the distribution. So the distribution is un fully and uniquely defined by the number of pickles on each of these plates. So you just need to find the number of these solutions. And this is already quite a known problem. The answer is m plus k minus 1 choose k minus 1 and the explanation is as follows let's take m plus k minus 1 indistinguishable objects i will actually i will explain this thing let's draw a wall between each pair of uh, the plates so between each of them there is a play uh, there is a wall now let's notice that there are m pickles and k minus 1 walls so in total there are m plus k minus 1 objects now let's assume that there are m plus k minus 1 indistinguishable objects let's choose k minus 1 of them and say that they are now walls and the rest of them are now pickles. Yeah, for example, in this case, we get three pickles and two walls. Now we can draw the distribution. How to do it? Between each two walls, let's draw a, a plate. And let's put all pickles between two walls or uh, to the left of the left wall or to the right of the right wall. Let's put all pickles into the corresponding plate. So here we will have two pickles, and here we will have one pickle. Now you see that there is one to one correspondence between the ways to choose k minus one walls among these m plus k minus one indistinguishable objects and between all partitions of m into k non negative integers. So this is easy to calculate. You just check that fm, uh, you calculate the choice number. So you need to, so how many plates do we have? We have fm minus one minus fm plates, and we need to choose F, M, we have FM pickles. So since we need to use this formula, the total answer is F, M, So the, the number of plates, number of pickles if, is fm. The number of plates is this number. 
And we need to calculate choose of F M minus one minus one and FM. So this is the formula. It seems that you need to choose FM objects from F M minus one minus one objects. It can be zero. In this case, the answer is immediately zero. After that, you subtract FM from FM minus one. And you continue. Okay. So this is the solution if s equals zero and all pi's are non-negative. This is the solution. Now let's slowly fix it for the other case. First of all, let's assume that some pi's are greater than zero and some pi's are smaller than zero. Actually, these two things are somewhat independent. You can prove yourself that if you have something like this, you just solve the problem independently for these things and for these things. Each time when you had like one, which is neighboring to two zeros, you subtract the number of zeros. When you had minus one, which is adjacent to two zeros, you also subtracted one from zeros. This is the only touching point of these two parts. The only thing is you need to have the same number P0 decreased both in case of considering one here and of in case of considering minus one here. And in the end, you need to check that P0 is uh, one after all these decrements. This is the only way how these two solutions touch. And the th second thing is actually S can be not zero. For example, let's assume that S is greater than zero. Less than zero is the same way, uh, is treated in the same way. In this case, if you draw a graph, it doesn't end here. Yeah, it's what it proceeds that it ended here. Actually, it can end in somewhere in the middle. So here it is. Okay. What do you do then? Actually, there is not a lot that changes. So let's take the maximum. If maximum is greater than S, then nothing changes at all. You do all, all, uh, always the same thing. It's the first case. The second case is if M is at most S. This means that actually you need to spend exactly one S here. Okay, you always need to spend exactly one S here. Moreover, its neighbor will be S minus one always. So you can just initially remove this one S from the array. So what you do if F M is zero, then answer is zero. And you do not continue because you needed the, the sum to be s and you do not have any s. After that, you just subtract one from fm. And now you can assume that it ended here and not here. So the ending point is here. So now you have the same situation as if m was greater than s. And you do the same thing after that as in the previous solution. Why is that? Well, because you can make one to one correspondence between the answers, answers where the last answer, uh, the last sum is S minus one, and this number is decremented. And between the situation where the last sum is S, and this is not decremented. It is really straightforward a one by one correspondence, one to one correspondence. Maybe I will need to show my code. So let's look at my code. First of all, I iterate over all possible S. 
then what do I do here? If s is negative, I reduce the problem to the positive s. To do that, I just invert or change with an opposite number all numbers in the array and the sum itself and return it with the positive numbers. Now let's assume that s is positive, then I say that the answer is 1 because answer is like cumulative cumulative in a product way so that each operation multiplies our answer by, by some number so that's why it's initially a neutral element in the ring by multiplication which is one, or one. <clears throat> now i only want to look at the positive numbers so this is like array f from my solution it can says the number of occurrences of each number. So I go through all numbers f and if they are non negative I increase pause. Then this is what I do. Let's see. First of all, if the number of elements supposed is negative, I just return zero. If it is greater than the previous one, I also return zero because it should be no more than the previous. The next thing is tricky. If i is at most s, then I subtract it. This corresponds to uh, this part of the reasoning, of the explanation. This number should end my sequence, so I remove it. Now i minus 1 ends my sequence. After that, if the number of such numbers is zero, then I just can continue because I have no numbers which will mess everything up. After that, notice that the number of i's should be strictly less than the number of, of the number of i minus ones. It is explained here and finally i multiply the answer by this choose number i didn't quite prove it i just understood during the contest that the formula should be like this unfortunately i didn't succeed in submitting in during the contest still but i understood this formula during the contest in the end we uh, subtract pi from pi minus 1 because each of i's has a i minus 1 in pair and they can both be eliminated easily. Okay, this is how you treat the positive numbers. How do you treat the negative numbers? First of all, we remove this prefix arrays for positive numbers. Then I do the same thing for the negative numbers, but the only difference is now that the solution is much easier because there is no s. So if the number of i's supposed is negative, I return 0. If it is 0, then I continue. If this is true, then I also return 0. And I just multiply the answer by the needed chose number. It's almost the same as here, but without this, maybe th without this part, I believe. Finally, I also ch ch check that there is exactly one zero in the array. And I return the answer. This is obvious, I explained it. This is also obvious. Okay, finally, problem F. I'm already such, so tired. But I will explain the problem F to you. There are three arrays. I will explain the harder version because I didn't solve... Well, I understand how the F1 is easier than F2, but I will only explain F2. There are three arrays, A, B, C, of length n, and C of length n minus 1. They decode 
encode, sorry. They encode the following uh, system. You have some object which has some input and some output. Let me draw it like this. So assume that it has input X. Then it is something which has A liters of water initially in it. It is a tower. You add X liters of water in it. Now it has A plus X liters of water. Then B of these liters are converted into wine. You might say that you get minimum of A plus X and B wine. After that, all the remaining water, which is A minus A plus X minus minimum, is transferred through this valve. So I also say that minimum of this and C, and I say that it goes to the right. Where it can meet the next machine, which has some other A prime, B prime, C prime. Why this minimum? Because there is some sort of maximum capacity of this valve, and you can't get any bigger than this. This is why this number is cut by C. So this goes, 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 and in the end, what you need to calculate is the total amount of wine. Moreover, there are some operations which say that some tower is replaced with some other tower. That's it. This is the problem. First of all, how do you solve such problems? To solve such a problem, first of all, you need to make a semi group of these towers. So, you need some operation of concatenation which merges two towers into one. Moreover, you will need this operation to be associative. If it is not, so this means that A, B, B, C is A, B, C. If it is not, A, S, O, T, A, T, V, T. If it is not, the solution will be much harder. So you need some operation uh, that if you put X liters of water into A and then the, the remaining thing into B, okay, uh, let me, let me rewrite. Hmm. For each machine, there are, if you have machine M, there are two functions. Out is, of X is how much more wine will be go to the right if we get, get, go get, give an input of X. So this is out of X. And also we get some wine of X. We have two functions, out M and wine M. These two functions. You need such an operation of product x, y that the product, the out of, sorry, let me call them m and n, the out of mn of x equals Mm. 
out m of x plus out n of r sorry out n of out m of x and y n m n of x equals y n m of x plus y n n of out m of x so this is uh the equation so if you have m and then then the total amount of y is how much it is got by giving x here and by giving n the amount which went out of m uh, and second thing is And the second thing is uh, sorry. Well. How much y do we get out of n? To find it, you need to first put x of water in m, then out x, out mx goes into the machine n, and then you get out n of out m of x. So again, hmm. what you need is you need to make an operation of concatenation, which is associative. And we will not actually prove that it is associative because it is usually true but the proof is just a lot of uh, hand work. You need to write a lot to prove it, and I will not do it now. My operation will be associative. It needs to be associative, and it needs to respect the operation that you are interested in. So if you are interested in x, putting it into m, and then putting the output of it into n, Machine MN should do exactly the same. It should output the same amount of water and the same amount of wine. The problem is, if you concatenate such two machines, you do not always get a correct machine. Let me give you an example. Let's assume that you have a tower and another tower. And this has a capacity of zero it has it is called wizard the amount of water which can turn into wine is called a wizard and initial amount of water is zero here and here the initial amount of water is one there is no wizard and the capacity is one okay this is the system the problem is you cannot make a machine which works like this why is that because if you input so let it be m and it be n if you input one liter of water if you first of all input zero liters of water then you get out mn 
of zero equals one because this one liter goes here. But when mn zero equals zero. But if you add one, then out is still one, but the wine is one. This is impossible effect of a single machine. Yeah, why is that? Because if you have out a man of so let this be a machine MN. So it's out of zero is one. And one is zero. Since it, ha it has out one, it means that the, this capacity is at least one. Since uh, the, this amount is one even without any one, this means that this initial amount of water is at least one. But since the wine is zero here, this means that it is zero. If there were a wizard, if there was a wizard capable of turning this water into wine, he would make at least one liter. But they don't do it. However, if you add at least one liter here, Suddenly, this wizard is capable of making this wine. So this is kind of strange. You see? There should be no wizard, but there is one. This happened because the expressing ability of concatenation of several machines is higher than the ability of a single machine. This is called a closed, a, a set is closed under some operation. You have an operation of uh, concatenation, and actually the set of initial machines is not closed under the concatenation, because under concatenation you can get a bigger set, which is closed, of possible uh, machines. Sometimes it is called M. Um, star or m bar or m hat anything like this but m is not closed under the separation so actually you need something some some more numbers some more operations to express what a machine concatenated of several ones can do However, during the contest, it's not the easiest task to think of the best way to generalize this machine. This is because, for example, one good way is just to look at these functions and to express these functions. But actually, these functions can uh, function can be parameterized by Uh, any finite set of numbers. So uh, uh, an arbitrary function cannot be parameterized by a finite set of numbers. So you look at the functions of, with the following graph. It looks like something linear and then something constant. But also, unfortunately, you have the same thing for out and for wine. So you have actually two functions. You have pair of functions. And while our Y looks like this, after that, out looks like this, and then it is also constant. So you need like a lot of numbers. You need this number, you need this number, you need this number, this number, this number. This is a mess. And then you need to combine these two functions. You need to somehow consider their <clears throat> how it's called composition so instead of that i will exp i will just make a machine instead of a function i will make a machine 
which is capable of one more thing. So my machine M is parameterized by four numbers A, B, C and T. This is what it does. First of all, it just generates generates A liters of wine immediately. No question asked, questions asked, it just generates A liters of wine. Also, it is capable of generating B more liters of wine if you give enough water. This is optional. This is mandatory, this is optional. <coughs> also, if there is some residual water, it can be sent through a pipe of capacity C. But also, T amount of water is obligatorily sent without spending this C. So, for example, the, the, the most water which can get into this a new container is C plus T and at least T. So T always goes through uh, this channel but besides that from 0 to C through this channel. So now that we have four numbers. This is uh, bigger than before because now it's four numbers and it explicitly says how much water always goes through this channel. Okay. So again, the machine always generates A liters of wine. Also, it can generate at most B liters of wine. It is always initially empty. Uh, no, no water here. Also, it always sends exactly t liters to the right, and it can send at most c more liters if all this x spent on this and there is some residual x. It can be sent through this channel. Okay, so we will need two things actually, since we have a uh, Semi group, which is also a monoid, monoid. We need two things. We need an ID, <coughs> an element which is neutral, and we need to multiply two machines. This is what we need. Let's start with the easiest thing. Oh, okay, and the third thing is we need to find out of this machine given X and Y of this machine given x. So the, th the first and the third things are easier and you can do it without hesitation, but the second one is harder. <clears throat> Let's start with the third one actually. So assume that you have a machine which always generates a wine. It can also generate at most b wine. It can always send t wine to the uh, t water to the right and it can add at most c more water <clears throat> let's calculate first of all wine of x how do you calculate the wine of x it is always a x is how much went here x, it is always a and plus how much was generated here and here was generated a minimum of x and b. So this is y. Now let's calculate out. How much went out? Always went t. And also there went minimum of c and residual water. And residual water is x minus minimum of x and b. So this is the out function. This is the 
while function, this is the out function. So we have calculated the third thing. Now let's calculate the first thing, which is id. How do you make a machine which doesn't change anything? Actually, it's not that hard. First of all, it should generate zero yn. So a equals zero. Second of all, it shouldn't be able to generate any additional yn here. Only thing it is capable of is to translate some yn from the left to the right. So t should always be zero also, and c should be plus infinity. This is your neutral element. Finally, we need to calculate how two machines interact. So you have a machine M with A M. You have machine N with B N with A N. Sorry. Also you have B N and A N. Also you have X here. You have some limit C M here, you have some T M here, you have some T N here, you can have some uh, C N here. Okay, this will not be easy, I say you it honestly. There are a lot of cases here. We will think through them. Okay, let's start with, actually we have four numbers, a, m, n, b, m, n, c, m, n, and t, m, n. Some of them are already, have, already have some obvious things. Let's start. First of all, you already have this answer and this answer. They are just generated by default. So we will not need them anymore. Let's draw them with blue because we will not need them anymore. Sorry, it is BN here. I miswrote it. Okay, let's continue. Uh, what about... BMN. First of all, all liquid which goes into this machine, it tries to fill this wizard. So actually it will be BN plus something. So it will be BN plus right answer. Since we will calculate it later, we will not need this number anymore, BN. So we just always also draw it with blue one. Okay. Also, it is obvious that this thing always transfers to the right. So we write TN here and forget about this number. I believe the rest of the numbers are not so simple. Okay, some of them are simple. What can I say? I can say that there will be some x here which is transferred here not x but y let's call it y and cmn will definitely be cn minus y it is 100 percent everything which is transferred always which is always transferred we will call it y and it be it it will decrease your cn so it is always cn minus y we will calculate y and this will be great. What next? Actually, I think we can calculate this number. So first of all, let's calculate. Let me think. How much liquid always gets here? Always gets here. It is simply TM. Yeah. What does this TM do? First of all, it tries to spend this BN. Okay. When it does, 
it adds to the answer. So here we can add minimum of Tm and Bn. This is always added to the answer. Okay, now we have some remaining liquid which did not go into Bn. Then it just always goes into uh, Cn. So now we have uh, plus minimum of Cn and Tm minus minimum. of TMBN. So this is our Y for now. Okay, now we do not have any more TM. It is fully spent here. Also, instead of BN, we now have BN minus minimum of Tm and Bn. Okay? Now I claim that this formula is finished. You do not have any more guaranteed Yn, except Am, An, and what leaked from this number into this number. You do not have any more. You stop them. Let's now calculate Bmn. How much can you increase your answer? First of all, it's of course Bn, Bn which goes here. The rest of the liquid should go through this valve. And also, let's not forget that, that this valve is also decreased by... Ah, no, 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 this valve is not decreased. I thought that this TM spent some of this uh, capacity, but not, it didn't. So, this liquid should go through CM. Then it should go here. And the remaining liquid can go here. <clears throat> so, how much can you increase your answer? You can increase your answer by this new BN. But actually, but not the full entirety of it. Because you are bounded by this cm so actually you have to write here minimum of cm and bn minus minimum of tm and bn and now b is complete <clears throat> okay how much liquid can go afterwards through this valve? Let's calculate it. Uh, actually, we know... Actually, no, this is not correct here. It is not minus y. <clears throat> I will show you the problem. <sighs> I will show you the problem. So, when you have filled all of this, all of this, how much remaining liquid do you have? You had Cm here, but now it is Cm minus this minimum. Let me write it in its entirety. Minimum of Cm and Bn minus minimum of Tm Bn. So this is the, re the remaining... Uh, remaining what? Remaining... Capacity.
let me do like this. And I will mute it down. Because I will need a lot of space here. Okay. <clears throat> so you have some remaining capacity. And only that much of a liquid can go firstly here and then here. So yes, you have CN. Let me write it. You have CN minus this minimum, which I called Y before. But actually, you cannot get any more than this and of the remaining capacity of the first valve. So C M minus minimum of C M and B N minus minimum of T M B N. So this is the final formula. This is how you multiply two machines. And this is, this uh, like fully explains why the problem is easier when C equals plus infinity. So in problem F1, C equals infinity. So first of all, you don't need this at all. Secondly, you don't have this minimum, you only have what well, this part here. You only have this part. I think I messed up. Because this should be called BM. And it is BM here, sorry. And here you don't have any minimum. It is always just, ah, you have minimum, but still. Okay, uh, let's just explain. Let's just, you can just uh, believe me that the formula are a little bit easier. So now you can multiply two machines. You can find an ID and you can find out of and why. How do you solve the problem? Actually, you just construct a segment tree. So you have a segment tree on all these machines. The segment tree makes you, allows you to do the following. Update. One machine in uh, log time. Notice that all operations that I explained earlier are all of one time. The second thing is find product of LR in also log of one time. How do you use this as a black box? First of all, you construct uh, your segment tree. You can either do it in O of n time using any start algorithm, or you can just run this update O of n times, and this will be in O of log n, n log n. However, you don't need actually, you can just construct uh, a segment tree in linear time. Then, when you have a query, you take it, you run it, and this is just one update of one machine. After that you multiply all machines, you can do it in logar logarithmic time, and you have just the final machine, and you run the function 3, which is like simply y. And the input is 0 as far as I remember, so you just print this number. I think it's just AM, where M is this machine. That's it. There was a huge number of bugs in my solution.
But finally, I was able to uh, get accepted, and even without a single wrong answer. But I should give a big a huge thanks to the author who gave big, nice pretests. Not even pretest, but samples. So this sample is. Uh, like it's really rich in terms of of what parts of solution are tested in it. So a lot of things are tested is tested here. So if you get these and these numbers, this means that solution is already almost correct. But I think that's it. I have finished. So thank you for watching.